that music. Party's not a party's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bad Minute! Attention citizens of Fair Gotham and welcome once again to Bat Minute Forever, the show that don't need no psychic names. We're the main event, baby. <laughs> I am one of your hosts, John Parker. And here with an eternal gratitude problem, it is I, Niall McGowan. <laughs> you got a lot of problems, McGowan. It's like, uh, your John just bailed me out to uh, save my house there. Never said thank you. Just, just like, no, oh, <laughs> f*** it. No, no, I don't care. No, no goddamn gratitude in this house. <laughs> no regard, neither. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we are joined once again by our two lovely, wonderful, amazing guests. First up, we have... I'm going to mix up the order, actually. Whoa. I'm going to do it the other way around today. All the way from Independence Day Minute, Alex Thompson. Hey, it is me still. Hi, hi. Hello. Hey, hey, Ooh. hey. Hey, hey. And, and joining him once again. We're not confusing you and getting a different guest to join him. That would be weird, wouldn't it? That, we should do that one time to throw people off. <laughs> we have, from Joe versus the Minute, I got it right, Niall. <laughs> Joff I'm going to do my best today But it's really hard buried under all this rubble <laughs> oh. I know we are podcasting from under the rubble Because we wanted to put ourselves in the right mind space We are method mm. podcasters We are, we are Well, we, we actually are sometimes <laughs> You know, on, if you want to go back through the archives If uh, Bruce Wayne is eating vichyssoise What are we doing? Yeah. We are eating vichyssoise <laughs> There's no food in this movie well, there was the, the, the poached salmon and itty-bitty quail eggs and all you that. Raw that. donkey meat. <laughs> yeah. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> the raw donkey meat's the worst goddamn thing. <laughs> Sterno niçoise. Yeah, the the, the eternal question is, like, if we, should, if we should throw caution to the wind and decide, like, hey, you know what? We're going to cover the Nolan movies at some point. <laughs> Like, there's a bit at that, that party where Joker's tearing in looking for Harvey Dent. And I've always been curious as to he steals something out of someone's hand and, like, takes a bite of some party food. I really want to know what it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> it'll be a perfect Always. excuse to find out. would just be to get to that one minute and just be like, there it was the whole time. It was a freaking <laughs> prawn skewer or something. Well, we're probably not going to do the minute by minute, but we'll do some kind of like special series on them. I, I think <laughs> that'd be good. Because if if you want minute by minute analysis, there there are other that. shows. Yeah, yeah someone's already yeah. done it. Yeah, and they did have the decency to contact us before they did it mm. to say, "Is it okay?" And we're like, "Yeah, go ahead, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, go check them out, everybody. We've had them on the show. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But this is minute eighty-one. The minute starts with a rubble rescue, and it ends with Bruce laying down the law. So yeah, we are we are back, and Bruce is no more once again for the tenth time in this series. <laughs> it was such a nice little ending, though. That last minute, it's like, yeah, that's that is the end of Batman. And now it's like, no, the whole who would have saw this coming? Somehow he's managed to survive this thing. <laughs> um, I will say though, of course, what actually happens is Dick Grayson appears from the sky. Plunges his hand in and hoists Batman out, up out of the rubble. Uh, cool. And we've talked, you know, throughout the show about this version of Dick being a sort of an amalgamation of all the other Robins that had happened at that point in 1995. Uh, and this is no different. We've had a little bit of Dick Grayson origins. We had a little bit of Jason Todd attitude. But this exact plot point is taken from uh, the origin story of Tim Drake, the third Robin. Uh, specifically in Batman 442, uh, which is part five of A Lonely Place of Dying by Marv Wolfman. Uh, mm. And within that story, both Batman and Nightwing have, uh, and we'll talk about him in a little second too, um, they've teamed up to take down Two Face. Uh, at this point, the, you know, the story, Tim Drake knows who Batman is. He's figured it out through like seeing him. We talked about it in another episode, but like he was able to suss it out by looking at Dick Grayson's uh, circus performances and realizing, connecting all the dots, basically. Uh, then when two, upon confronting Two-Face under his grandfather's house, uh, Two-Face blows it up 
and, and both Batman and Nightwing are trapped under the rubble, much kind of kind of like what's happening right here. Uh, then back in Wayne Manor, uh, Tim and Alfred are sitting waiting for them to come home, and Tim realizes something's gone wrong, so there's nothing for it. He's going to have to don the Robin outfit, become the new Robin, because at this point, Jason Todd's dead. Uh, and then he races in, uh, the, him and Alfred, weirdly enough, confront Two-Face, subdue him. Uh, and then they go down, Tim Drake hauls Batman out of the rubble the Two-Face created, exactly okay. like in this uh, this little scene. Uh, and it's a little weird as well, because that comic specifically brings up the reason that Batman needs a Robin, uh, is because it seems as if the crooks all think that Robin is one kid. Like, Two-Face sees him, and he's like, oh, I thought you were dead. Like, you haven't been around for a while, but ah, I guess you're alive. And it's like, okay, so they all think that Dick Grayson and Jason Todd and Tim Drake are one child who never like grows that. up, apparently. Well, it adds to the mystique of these, like, and they're almost supernatural, but they're not really. That thing, that, that's, that's the thing, yeah, at the end of the story. The, the, the way they convince Bruce at the end of that issue to give Tim a shot as the new Robin is by saying, like, well, you can't let people think that Robin can die. Robin yeah. is as important a symbol as Batman, and that Batman has to be immortal. He is a symbol. He's not a person. He's a he's an idea. Uh, and then Robin has to be the same. If you think that if crooks out there think that they can just go kill Robin, it kind of spoils them. As it, like, it it makes it seem you like Batman. You can kill Batman too. You can kill oh, Batman too. The whole the whole house of cards starts to tumble. Yeah. So uh, so there you go. That's that's the origin of the. That's where the scene directly comes from. Anyway, I like uh, that. I, like I, that. I have a yeah. question about the reference. So when Tim pulls him out of the rubble is it the same as the way they stage it here where he's doing some kind of circus acrobat thing so that he can dangle above the pile or does he just rush over to the pile and root and just pull him like a normal person not in a movie would do it he has to move a bunch of stuff out of the way like he just hauls him out like a normal person would the reason i think they're doing the acrobat thing uh, is because this is, in fact, a little callback to earlier in the movie. Mm-hmm. Because, of course, we had Dick doing his famous flip with the with the Flying Graysons and his dad. Uh, and, of course, when his dad was dangling down, he was able to catch Dick, cla- like, grab the hands, and he hoists his son up. And much the same way here, the same kind of framing. Dick Grayson has taken his father's position. I guess you could say it's carrying on the Grayson legacy or whatnot in some way. Daddy Dick. By, like, <sighs> he's adopting his colors to become something new. He's he's taking the legacy further. And he's grabbed, grabbed Bruce's hand in the same way and hauled him up. Yeah, I like that. And I, I also find it genuinely fascinating a, a turn for the character of Batman, this scene. Because, you know, Batman here, he's done. He yeah. is going to die. Mm. Like, in this moment, he... He finally actually, for the first time, needs somebody, and he just so happens to have him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which any other time this had happened, he wouldn't have anyone. I have to say, though, too, like, the outfit, it's just really lame. Like, it is lame. <laughs> it's just a little mask and just like the, of course, Batman looking up there and saying, thank you, mysterious mask stranger. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way, though, this movie seems to kind of acknowledge that it's yeah. lame. Yeah, mm. they a bit like in X. They throw it out. They're exactly. gonna throw this outfit out next time we see the character. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. justifiably because it's stupid. Mm. <laughs> I think it was like in the next. Was it the next minute? Like Dick's like put this next to the bat suit where it belongs. Well, like, <laughs> hey kid. That, More that, so this, than this, it's this... just being stupid, it doesn't really offer anything tactically, right? Batman's no. wearing armor and he's mm. got a you know he's got a utility belt with tools on it that he can use. Robin's in a leotard. Yeah, <laughs> it might help if but, he wasn't a thirty-five-year-old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God! It's actually this is the first time we've gone more than like two episodes without bringing that <laughs> bringing up the fact that Robin is kind of simultaneously a, a is he a thirteen-year-old boy? Is he a thirty-three-year-old man? <laughs> hmm. I have to say though, I think this 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 moment in particular would be much more powerful if he were a little kid. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you imagine like this is a little like thirteen-year-old, you know, friggin'. What's his face? Brad Renfro from The Client. Like, he's he's that age at this point. Like, him just reaching up and hauling Batman out, and Batman looking up and seeing a little kid. And it's just like, it'd be such a weird thing to see, too. But then it'd also be like, oh, this is, it, it all kind of gels together. It's much more powerful. And now it's just like, this, yeah, this friggin' yeah. guy. And imagine how well that would work for the kids in the audience. Like, I'm a, I'm mm-hmm. a kid. I could be, yeah. I could save Batman one day. Good. Exactly. Well, it works on so many levels. Yeah. And also, it makes sense because, like, 
this Robin as well, something I really enjoy about this shot is it, it portrays how difficult this would be. It's realistic. People are very heavy. He is putting everything into this. And that would work as well for a kid. Like a kid, it would be so hard to lift Batman up to mm. help him out of that. Yeah. So he it actually, would... based on the lift that it looks like we are seeing here, I don't know that he is even necessarily doing much of the lifting. He, Batman, I think, I believe, has to be essentially kicking his legs like he's swimming. The problem is, well, the reason why he can't just do that on his own is because without an anchor point to steady himself to. Yeah. He, he's just kind of flailing like you were if you're in zero G. But mm. Robin is giving him essentially a point to grab onto to, st- to, to a fixed point so that he can then kick his legs and swim out of the, um, mm. the rubble. Mm. And God damn, it's taken its toll on Robin. Look at him, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, well, he was sweaty ah. at the circus too. So I think, I think, <laughs> I think, if Chris O'Donnell's not just naturally a big sweater, then Robin certainly <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, they're like that's the thing too. At any other point in this confrontation, like Robin would have been screwed too. Like you know, because he's he's not wearing any armor. So I guess mm. it's like all the sweat is just from him like running over to the manhole cover. And then lowering himself down. I was like, I guess maybe that's why, like, Alfred has, like, you need a rubber suit, sir, because <laughs> let me tell you, it'll all pull by your feet, but at least it won't hinder your performance. <laughs> <laughs> sir, are you familiar with swamp ass? <laughs> <laughs> familiar with bat ass after this movie. There's a, there's a lot of bat butt. Just last night I watched uh, Onward. Uh, and of course, you know, it's all set in like, you know, sort of quasi mythological sort of things like, oh, elves, but in modern day times, one of my favorite side jokes I had on it was the gas, the gas station was called Swamp Gas. And I was just <laughs> like, I, I know there is a, such a thing as Swamp Gas, but I know what you're actually, I know what the joke's actually supposed to be there, yeah, Pixar. Yeah, yeah. You didn't get that one past me. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> right. So, yeah, we, we fetch Batman out of the. Yeah, and then uh, I do. I love the cut though of just jumping into the Batcave with the uh, "What the hell did you think you were doing?" <laughs> just <laughs> roaring the whole head off, Dick. Um, which again, yeah, yeah. lonely place of dying. Like as soon as Tim Drake hauls Batman out of the rubble, he just yanks the mask off his face and he says, "You're not Robin. You're, there is no Robin and stuff. I don't even know who you are, kid." Uh, so again, that's all quite true to to that adaptation. Mm-hmm. Just been like, yeah, he, he doesn't want anybody helping him out at this point. Yeah, and I mean, I originally wrote down in my notes, he's, you know, he's angry, right? But he's he's glad to have been saved, which we now may think otherwise after our discussion here. Maybe mm. he doesn't want to be saved. But I put, you know, he's glad to have been saved, but he's worried. He, this kid, he doesn't want him following in his footsteps. This is a lonely road, even if there's two of them. It's a dark road. It's a dangerous road. You lose yourself, yeah, yeah. There is no Bruce. We've said this multiple times. There's no Bruce. This version of Bruce, there's a little bit more going on with him. Mm. But even so, it's still, he's quite dead inside. Mm. It is quite telling as well, the fact that he's like, he's, you know, his what the hell do you think you're doing is more like, you put yourself in danger, you yeah. you, you complete fool. And it's more like, I, I'm more concerned over your safety, even though nothing could have happened to you because you were just hanging back to, mm-hmm. to dig me out of a thing. Whereas I was quite prepared to die, <laughs> which is, yeah. uh, you know, it is quite telling about it. Even without, without all the stuff in the novelization about him actively wanting to die, uh, the, the in the finished film version of Bruce is just kind of like, you know, don't you be putting yourself in harm's way for me. Like, I was prepared to go mm-hmm. if that was the, the case and stuff. But uh, I'm also quite curious in that... Um, because then it cuts to Dick, you know, storming towards Bruce with his, like, oh, you got a real attitude problem, a real gratitude problem, Bruce. We see the, the Batmobile lowering itself back down again. Mm. And it's like, I guess it would have had to have been that, how did they get back to the Batcave? They would have had to, the Batmobile would have had to have done that little, like, honing thing it did in 89. Was The Batmobile wasn't even there. That's the thing. Like, I guess they would have had to send it out. Because I can't imagine Bruce, like, running back to the Batcave after this. Well, no. So. so what I would imagine is the Batmobile probably, it seems like, is just kind of on an auto timer. Whenever somewhat the right person enters the Batcave, the Batcave, the Batcave kicks on, which includes the Batmobile coming up. So I'm guessing the Batmobile is just coming back down. 
That'd be just as annoying as when you go onto Netflix and it starts automatically playing movies if you glide oh, the cursor over. It's like, nobody wants that. Like, why would you then have that there? But now, like, every time you walk into the bat- so bat then cave, the, the Batmobile comes as up and... But then the extra part of that is then these three had an awkward car ride home in the regular car. <laughs> in silence. <laughs> I like to think, though, that Alfred just had the attitude of, like, everyone's driven that blasted Batmobile but me. So he, he <laughs> drove the ro- rolls back to Wayne Manor then he drove the Batmobile out to get them I was like yeah, that's, that's right and he was he had the fins down I was like yeah smash him up smash him up uh, yeah <laughs> although I hate I hate to ruin all the fun but you know the Batmobile you can call it it doesn't need a driver yeah it can, it can go on its own accord yeah, mm. yeah. Oh, we, we, we did see it in 89 with the stop and all that mm. business when it just mm. came right up to his goddamn shins <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, that that was crazy. But in talking about though, like oh, when Dick Grayson stole uh, the Batmobile, we get you get kind of a weird call back to it because then he says like, oh, I need a name, Bat Boy, and like Bat Boy is what the the members of In Vogue, the the ladies <laughs> of the evening, were jokingly calling him. <laughs> like, oh to, yeah, to I take the piss out of him. <laughs> Have been like if they can like all call him like bat dip shit or something, he would have been like, I need a name, bat dip, shit. you know, like, well, it's like he clearly did, he was just like hired bat boy, and then his mind was like, you know what, that well, that works for me. I think that's actually gonna that's gonna do the job. Well, I looked up bat boy, thinking that sounds familiar, but I'm not too uh, versed in the various cartoons and whatnot. So I, I looked it up, and it, it turns out it is a character. Um, so I am reading this from a wiki. Mm-hmm. I know I never do that normally. I hate reading from a wiki, but here you go. It says, Bat Boy is a Batman from a different universe that appears in the Batman The Brave and the Bold episode. Batmite presents Batman's Strangest Cases. His crime-fighting partner is Rubin. <laughs> and their universe seems to be based off the animated show Looney Tunes. Uh, it, t- it took me a second there with that. I was like, Rubin? That's like, oh, wait, no, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty uh, pretty fun. I, and I looked it up, and it basically is just a ripoff of Looney Tunes. It's that exact art style. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what the hell this episode is. We need to cover this as a Patreon episode now. Oh, any of the Brave and the Bold stuff is fantastic, though. Brave and the Bold is just Batman gone yeah, crazy. Yeah, I, I <laughs> could see you guys were talking about what you do after you finish Batman and Robin. I could see you guys doing Brave and the Bold. I could see that being a lot of fun. <laughs> Ooh, I think okay. the last episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold features uh, married with children actor Ted McGinley. <laughs> being the cause of the sh- of Batmite's favorite show being canceled because yeah. notoriously Ted McGinley will get any show canceled as soon as he's cast on it. This sounds amazing. Why Why have you not informed me how good this is? Oh, it's, it's absolutely not. It used to be all on Amazon Prime too, but they took it off. It was heart, heart-wrenching the day that it left. So I was like, but the yeah. Batman Bear the Bowl is, is I nuts. have it all on DVD. I could probably rip it to something for you. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you no, legally uh, I mean, yes, legally us. purchase a thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, but that's the thing though. Not only the Bat Boy illusion, then you also get, of course, the big one. Everyone yeah. remembers Nightwing, mm-hmm. which of course in the comics will go on to be Dick Grayson's other identity. Yeah. Uh, do, do any of you guys do you know where the the name Nightwing in the comics actually comes from? Though I do know. I wish I didn't know. If, <laughs> oh. if, if I remember correctly, it's. A superhero from Krypton that that Dick Grayson learns about from Clark. So it's... I hate it. Right? It More or less. So it it is an alias used by Superman uh, in stories set on Kandor, the, the city in the bottle. Um, Superman and his sidekick, Jimmy Olsen, create vigilante identities inspired by Batman and Robin. Mm. Since Mm. there are neither Bats nor Robins on Krypton, they can't call themselves Batman and Robin. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, Nightwing is Superman, Mm -hmm. and Flamebird is Jimmy Olsen. Mm -hmm. Uh, And because, again, yeah, the bald city of Kandor, um, they don't have uh, superpowers. So uh, basically... Uh, they have to fly around via 
things that are basically like rocket girdles. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see like artwork of it. It's just like a big golden girdle wrapped around their waist with two little rocket jets coming out the side. And yeah, they fly around on, on that. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, l later on, I think actually originally, like pre-crisis, it was that Batman and Robin did go and visit Kandor. And they saw, they, you know, they saw Nightwing and Flamebird. And they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then later on, when Dick Grayson is, you know, going out by himself, he recalls his experience there. And then he adopts mm -hmm. Nightwing in tribute. Uh, and then post-crisis, it's that Clark tells him about, yeah, like you said, Jarf, like the, there was a Kryptonian vigilante who was also, I think at that point, because in the, when Nightwing first shows up, I think it's in 84, 19, like, yeah, teen, uh, Tales of the Teen Titans from uh, 1984. Uh, they have, um, Bruce basically doesn't want to let Dick be in the Teen Titans anymore. Uh, he said the whole thing of, like, oh, you're splitting your time between my crime fighting and with these goofy friggin' alien people and all this stuff. <laughs> you, you can't keep doing both and call yourself Robin. Uh, and so, therefore, you know, Dick turns to Clark Kent because he's, he's, he's buddies with him. Uh, and I think, yeah, Clark then tells him the story of Nightwing and whatnot. Uh, and I'm not, too, yeah, but again, I'm not too sure because DC continuity is all over the goddamn place. So that is one version of how it happens. Another version is just that Dick remembers that, oh, I met a guy called Nightwing one time. Well, can I just say the reason that I don't like the Nightwing origin of the name story is because I don't think it needs that elaborate reason for him to come up with a different name. But yeah, yeah I doesn't... think he just wants a cooler, more badass sounding name. Why can't it just yeah. be that? <laughs> like, I'm not a kid. Oh. Robin sounds like a kid. I want to be something that's a bit scary. And it mm. makes him can and it makes him continue to, in a sense, be a derivative character. Right. Yeah. He's still kind of not his own man. If he's adapting his if he's adopting his crime fighting name from someone else's crime fighting story. Yeah, even to that point, too, uh, the original Nightwing outfit with the big popped collar and stuff. We talked about it a little bit earlier in the, in the, in the season. And I was like, oh, it's a little bit like Dead Man's collar. And apparently, yeah, from looking into it, in comics continuity, that, that outfit is originally some sort of variation based on Dead Man that Dick Grayson made. So it's like, yeah, you, th this guy just doesn't have an original bone on his body. <laughs> He's just yeah. like, yeah, okay, so I, I was Robin, because, and I was just adapting my family's colors. Now I'm Nightwing, and I just took that from Superman, and I stole my outfit from Dead Man. And here you go, I'm my own man now, apparently. <laughs> I also like Nightwing as a name, w without all of that, because it does solidify him as his own man as you say you know he's, he's his own person he's going his own way but it still has a sort of thematic tie to batman you know night like dark night and the night sky things like this batman operates in this world and, you know wing batman flies so it kind of ties him into the bat family shall we say but without uh making him feel like a subordinate mm -hmm. i should say That's that i do like the concept of Nightwing quite a lot because it's, I I like the idea of Dick Grayson growing up. I think it makes sense that he would have some kind of break with Batman at some point just because yeah. it's like, it's like they started out as a duo with him being so young and he's there's going to be some kind of growing pains and he's going to want to go his own way. I just, I, I haven't read a ton of Nightwing comics, but I've never, I've never found the version that I really felt like capitalized on the potential of that character. If anybody in the yeah. group has recommendations of things I could check out, then the, the next time I have money anyway, I'd be happy to hear them. But yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. I, I'd like to know as well. I, I don't think I've ever really sat and read an individual comic of his. Uh, speaking of uh, Dick Grayson and an original idea, uh, let, uh, I, I, I have to talk about his shirt because I spent an inordinate <laughs> amount of time last night <laughs> researching, researching Dick Grayson's wardrobe. Oh, did you get any info? Uh, kind of not really. So oh. this shirt he's wearing here, um, I will point out over the course of the movie, 
Dick Grayson wears a total of two things that could be roughly described as graphic tees. This mm. and also the shirt that is under his leather jacket when he steals the Batmobile. Uh, this yeah. one he is, fun fact, also wearing when he does the Kung Fu laundry. Mm-hmm. Great scene. Um, I looked, I scrubbed the hell out of these images. Both of them look like they are basically meant to look like album covers without, I guess, really being in album covers, because then you've got to pay royalties. Um, yeah. So the one that he wore under the leather jacket when he stole the Batmobile, the word that you could, it, well, not even a word, the lettering you could make out was... A T A P O, then a capital lambda, then an E, and then something underneath it with an M in it. Uh, his jacket opens a little bit whenever he's punching Batman. Um, and this one, you can kind of in the upper left corner make out a C I K something. Uh, so I mm. looked up C I K O, C I K C, nothing there. Um, no. It does seem to be. It it looks like it's the head of a clown. Basically, is coming up onto like some sort of background of black vine, green vines on a black background. And for like a long time, I thought I was like, is that Ku Klux Klan from The Simpsons? Is that that big white triangle thing? But it, no, it does seem. It looks like it's actually like a clown's head. Uh, which maybe that's why Bruce is so furious at him. He's like, "Don't wear clowns around me, clowns kids!" Aren't Jesus funny Christ. in Gotham. My guess <laughs> is that the costume designer wanted to put him in like Metallica shirts and Megadeth shirts and stuff like that, definitely because it's edgy. Um, and yeah, he's then cool. someone he's in legal said, yeah, "We're not paying to. We're not going to pay <laughs> to license Ride the Lightning. So uh, <laughs> make something that looks like an your album cover." I guess it makes yeah. sense too, because it's like, well, that's tying. Although they have done it in the movies, they but it's a, it, that's very much tying like this reality to Batman or to the real world. That yeah. people go like, oh, Metallica also exists in this version yeah. of and Gotham. That's, like, and that's the first thing I looked up was I was like, what's the album? Co- what's the album artwork for "Hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me"? Because I I was mm. assuming as soon as I saw the picture, I'm like, I'm assuming that's the album cover, right? They threw the yeah. album artwork for their their soundtrack songs on his shirt. But one other point I would make is I do like the fact that he wears this same shirt when he's doing the Kung Fu laundry, because this is a kid who essentially lives out of a suitcase. He doesn't have a lot of clothes. I'm sure Bruce and Alfred probably bought him something, but mm-hmm. he, he's not super thrilled on taking their charity. So, yeah, he's only got a couple shirts. <laughs> yeah. And I can't imagine he is going to want to wear whatever. They oh, get. yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. That'd be great, though, if he actually saw, like, another scene of Alfred in his downtime, and it's actually his shirt that he went with <laughs> Dick Grayson. <laughs> I finally got my clown shirt back, sir. <laughs> this was my amazing. punk rock band in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's the kind of shirt you wear around the house on, like, a Sunday morning. You can't be bothered putting any clothes on yet. You're getting ready late. Yeah. <laughs> or nowadays, under quarantine, yeah. you wear every quarantine. single day. <laughs> yeah. I guess what I saw, like, yeah, one of the... Uh, previous guest of the show Briley Bishop on Twitter saying like oh yeah now to t- change from my daytime pajamas into my nighttime pajamas <laughs> that's, that's life in quarantine oh if only I didn't still have to go to bloody work <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the thing though because I know Jarf you do have to yeah. go pretty pretty sharpish here because um, then the rest of the minute is basically Bruce lambasting Dick yeah. they have a little back and forth here about like you know he's suggesting names and then mm-hmm. Bruce is like a lot about uh, Dick Grayson college student and all this kind of yeah. stuff well, that's a fair point I think yeah it's like go to college yeah. there's one mm. thing I do want to touch on briefly I know we're up against the clock I don't think we ever get to see him shirtless again is that even Val Kilmer is in shape he's not a muscle man which is no yeah no. you know you think about Christian Bale as Batman and he's swole bruce A- bruce affleck ben affleck even more swole this is just like mm. an in-shape dude uh, i think yeah. it's it's kind of it's refreshing in a way especially now that we've seen the mcu take every comedian in the world and make them get oh, make them oh, get yeah. packs camille nanjali was like turns out to be like some sort of yeah. absolute muscle machine now it's, it's terrifying <laughs> to look at them. my least favorite one with that is with guardians of the galaxy mm-hmm. because i mean that his character in that should be a bit schlubby. Yeah. Mm. He's not a disciplined a guy, so you no. don't really... Yeah. Yeah. There's no way that he's doing sit-ups. 
No. Yeah. No. He's he's exactly. eating he all the junk food in the galaxy, drinking too much. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. His body type in uh, Parks and Recreation would have made more sense. <laughs> right, it's true. It just wouldn't have sold as many movies. But sure. yeah. But now is right. I do actually have to go. Yes. Mm. But okay. thank you. I mean, obviously you don't have to wrap up, but I have to go. But thank you for having me back on the show. This has been fun as always. Oh, no problem at all, Jarf. Uh, you know, we're more than welcome back to, to join us in our deep descent into Batman and Robin next season. So. Oh, please sign me up. I, I, I feel like the podcast just keeps getting better as the movies oh, arguably get, get weirder and sillier. Oh, good. I, I think I feel that recording it, but I don't ever know if that comes across. <laughs> well, thanks very much for saying that as well. Yeah, and thank you. Would you like to uh, do some quick plugs before you run off? Would you like to tell people about where to find your show one more time? Sure, sure. So I'm just wrapping up Joe versus the Minute, uh, covering Joe versus Volcano one minute at a time, and that's on Twitter and Instagram at Joe versus Minute. Hey, hey. check it out, everybody. Yep. Should should we keep recording for a little minute just to do a couple of other tiny things? Yeah, we, we can keep going yeah. for, for a little bit yeah. if you're if you're up for it, so Alex. We'll speak to you soon, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cheerio. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I can kind of just go into a closing spiel here. Um, so, yeah, I was really glad when you guys reached out to me about this movie, uh, even more so than mm. Batman Returns. Obviously, I got to do a walking impression for a long period of time there. <laughs> but uh, so I know I'm I know we're all in the similar age cohort, but I'm a couple years younger than you guys. So I was slightly too young to really get into Batman Returns. But I was seven when this came out. I was the perfect age to get all the merch, all the things. We had the McDonald's glasses. We had the, you know, every children's activity book and action figure and novelization. And so this in in conjunction with the animated series, in a sense, this was my Batman. So this allowed me Mm. to kind of experience that. Oh, yeah, Batman can be really grim and serious and it can also be a little wonky. Mm. Yeah, that's good. You get a good blend of all the different styles of Batman in this one, I think. And in a sense, I think it kind of gave it sort of formed my take on superhero movies, which is that I, I don't tend to treat to ever treat the source material with so much irrever with so much reverence that mm. I'll get offended if someone digresses from it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the best attitude to have as well. I don't know. It seems to only apply to superhero movies. Yeah. Right. Cause in comic books, you can go against the law. You can reboot stuff. You can just start over. You can completely change a character and nobody bats an eye. They just go, Oh, this is a different take on it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, once that's committed to film, it's like blasphemy. For some reason, <laughs> once the for some reason, once Ben Kingsley is actually an actor and not the real Mandarin. Yeah, yeah. it's like how dare you do that? It's like, well, I mean, this is just a different take on that. That's fine. Yeah. Like you can do different things. <laughs> that's the joy of comics. I think it's just because you can get like multiple different titles of comics per month, where it's like you have like five different Spider-Man books, so you can just do whatever the hell you want with that. But then when you make it like, this is the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm-hmm. and this means that the Mandarin will not be appearing in the form that you yeah. prefer because this is the one version of this we're doing. There's not there's not going to be like a an Iron Man TV yeah. show. Where, although weirdly enough, with like uh, Harley Quinn at the minute, you have a Harley Quinn TV show, yeah. multiple Harley Quinn comics. And a live action version of her that are all slightly different. Yeah, so, yeah I you wonder, can actually. Do I wonder it, if it's a little bit because comic books are kind of niche, right? So there are a lot of people for whom their Batman and the only, excuse me, the only Batman they've seen and experienced was Batman sixty six. Mm, yeah. My mother watched that show, loved that show, has no time for any other Batman animated, live <laughs> action, anything. That's the only Batman she knows or cares about at all is silly Adam mm. West Batman. In a sense, common. by putting it in a visual medium and in a film, you're kind of locking it in for for a for a subset of the population. But like yeah. for me, because I was growing up seeing, oh look, there are two different, two very different characters who are both called Two Face, and mm. that's that's cool. That's fine. There are two very yeah, two pretty yeah, yeah. different characters called Riddler, and that's okay. Mm. And it's the same though with with um, the Star Wars movies. People seem to really get 
angry and angry and angry at anything that deviates even even the slightest way and they're like i'm getting sick of all these movies there's too many of them look look again at comic books there's about a thousand of these comic books every bloody month and nobody complains get more in the comic spirit people Mm. yeah Uh, but uh yeah i guess those are just my closing thoughts on the movie and then um in general plugs one last time or yeah, go, go, yeah. right ahead, plug, um, plug away. Yeah, Independence Day Minute at a podcatcher near you. Uh, I guess Galaxy Quest Minute was mentioned this week. Um, that's uh, that's long done, but you can check that out as well. Um, and social medias for all those things are, are pretty easy to find. But uh, mm. thanks for having me on again, guys. Oh, no problem at all. You are also yeah. more than welcome to come back for the... Uh, <laughs> the our, our head first dive oh, into oh boy, oh Batman boy, oh boy, Robinson. oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, if if we didn't invite you back, I mean, you would follow us around all night. You would uh, stalk I us. You wouldn't leave us alone. Probably You'd take would. a leaf out of uh, <laughs> yeah, copy copy dick I'd here. Buy buy a plane ticket to. <laughs> oh, so yeah, come and speak to us as well. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. There is a Tumblr still, but nobody uses Tumblr anymore. But you know, if if you message on there, I will get the notification. So I can. Nobody apply. uses Tumblr That's anymore. Fine. The porn is gone. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that is the reason that most people fled. <laughs> yeah. Nobody honest. uses the Tumblr anymore. There's a new Batmobile. Uh, Matt Reeves There's, made oh. one. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so do uh, come and talk to us on there. Buy a T-shirt on TeePublic. Uh, give us a review. That's always lovely jubbly. And we'll be back next week with more Bat Minute Forever. Next time, supporting Bruce's Corton. A bothered butler grabs the garb of an ebullient boy wonder, whose behavior has blown the Batcave asunder. But as Bruce begins to tire of his prospective squire, can perusing a portrait of a lady of light relight his fire? Find out next week. Same Bat Pod, different Bat Minute. Ba-da-da, ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da